I, I just will have a dance, aka Dre the Martian, and we are back. We're back today with the Beatles, the Beatles, Ringo and the Boys, whatever you want to call them, right? The Goats, Legends, all that, man. We're here today. We got what their tenth studio album, their eleventh studio album. I don't even know if this is an album. It, I guess it technically is. I didn't know it existed until a couple weeks ago. It, it, Yellow Submarine. Let's get to it, y'all. Let's get to it. All right, yes, yes, we are here today with the Beatles. We got Yellow Submarine, and like I just said on the intro, I didn't know this album existed until a couple weeks ago, right? It's kind of strange to me that they dropped Yellow Submarine is from 1966, right? It's a 1966 um, song, right? But then they have the Yellow Submarine soundtrack that came out in 1969 after the White Album. It's, it's kind of weird. But somebody explained to me that this is more of a soundtrack to a film than it is an actual album. And I could tell that judging off the fact that there are only six songs by the Beatles on this album. And two of them we already heard. Right, the second half of this album is apparently like a George Martin score. And I do just want to take a second real quick to show some love to George Martin, man. That's, that's one person who in all my Beatles videos I haven't given the amount of credit he deserves, man. A lot of these arrangements... These melodies, these beautiful moments that I be here mm, stank facing, like just having a great time listening to it, it. A lot of it is due to George Martin, right? He puts this together. He puts the pieces together, right? The Beatles come in. They make beautiful sounds. George Martin makes those beautiful sounds make sense to our ears. That's pretty much his role. So you got you to gotta give George Martin his credit for that. But, <laughs> and this is a big but, man. With all that being said, I'm not listening to this shit. Like, I don't, listen, 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 like, let's just, let's get it out the way that I am not, I'm listening to track one through track six, okay, I, I'm sure George Martin is an amazing composer, um, producer, obviously he's an amazing producer, right, but I'm not trying to hear, like, I already sampled some of these songs, I already skimmed through the first couple songs, I don't want to hear this shit, right? I already like skimmed through the first couple of tracks to see if it would be interesting to at least listen to and put in the reaction, and I don't think so, y'all. I don't think so, y'all. It sounds like sounds like music that would play during like a, a Victorian Netflix show, right? Like, uh, what's a good Netflix show that's like in the Victorian era? Any show that's in the Victorian era, a lot of these songs could play on there and listen. I'm sure somebody could vibe to that. I can't vibe to that, man. See, I'm not bumping the George Martin half of this album, but I will be locked in on the Beatles half. We got six tracks, four new songs. Right, I'm hoping that one member gets a song of peace. Well, Ringo probably won't because he already got yellow. So, is this the Ringo album? I hope this is the Ringo album. I hope all these songs are just Ringo songs at this point, man. That would be that would be the best outcome of this right here. All right, but it's the Beatles, man. I know it's gonna be something amazing on here. I know it's gonna be something that I can pull out of these tracks right here. It can't it can't be all by Sura. I heard some of y'all saying, man, skip the skip Yellow Submarine, skip Yellow Submarine. See, so yeah, we're going to jump right into it. We're going to listen to all six tracks, even though I've heard two of them before. We're just going to catch the entire vibe the Beatles trying to present to us. Um, and yeah, all right, real quick before we get into the album, y'all know I got to do my little promotion section, right? But this is actually really important because I'm promoting my second channel, right? I do have a second channel. Link is in the description. It's in my channel description. I'll probably leave it in the comments somewhere. But the second channel is pretty much just me diving into everything about these bands beyond the music, like music lore, interviews, documentaries, biopics, you know, things of that nature. And I think it's a really interesting channel. It's going to be a really interesting concept, right? It's a much more chill, relaxed, non-copyrighted vibe over there, so... Yeah, link is in the description. Y'all should go go follow, man. I already got a video up on there, uh, Beatles versus the Beach Boys. It's really technical, really like music nerdy, but I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I'm not going to lie. I actually think the channel is going to be really good for me personally because I've kind of figured out it's hard to learn a lot about this music just sitting here listening to it on first reaction basis. So doing more videos like I'm doing on my second channel and kind of like diving into more of the nuances of not just like the not just the drug addiction and the drama, but the nuances of music, like how they created the music, like how Smile was created, things of that nature, like the wall of sound versus isolated instruments. Like these are things I'm learning already on that first channel. And I'm hoping a year from now I'll be able to just hear this music and just like just identify everything like oh like oh is that the is that the cello oh hold on he he playing them keys in a minor like you feel me like something like that but all that being said the full version of this reaction will be on patreon link below like comment subscribe share with your friends all that good stuff man we're here today the beatles yellow submarine we got track number one yellow submarine let's get to it y'all let's have a jolly good time in the town Talk to me, Ringo. Lived a man of marine. I'm drunk still here. So we sailed up to the sun. Yeah. We all live in a yellow submarine. Yellow submarine. 
Ringo really do sing like a sailor. Niggas. I get a lot of sailor vibes from Ringo. Talk to me, Orange. Still, still don't understand these these noises quite quite frankly. Sea of green. We all live. <laughs> Ringo got a dope voice sometimes, man. Like it's very unique, very niche in some type of ways. I told you he's he's definitely a sailor. Like he was definitely a sailor in his past life, man, but it worked perfectly for Yellow Submarine, of course. All right, yeah, that was track number one, Yellow Submarine, and I'm not going to say too much about this song. I've already reviewed this song. I already talked about this song a lot on my channel. Right, I used to be much more of a bigger hater of this song, but after hearing it in the context of Revolver, right, it still didn't make much sense on Revolver, but I can kind of see, like, the psychedelic, like, I told you, when I hear this song, I picture, like, Ringo just hazed out. <laughs> like like in a submarine underwater just singing it with like like you know all type of animals and fishes and things just swimming around him. It's, it's it's weird. The image I get when I listen to this song is just very weird. Right? I know it's supposed to be a children's song, but it's like just the melody, just like the repeating the repeating of the yeah, little submarine just makes it kind of a creepy song in a way. I don't know. That's just me. But yeah, a good song right there. Never a song I'm gonna ever play on purpose. Like I'm never just gonna pick up my iPhone and be like, what I want to hear today? Mm, let me let me hear some Ringo Sailor tunes. Like, I'm just not, that's just not me. But I do appreciate the song for what it is. I don't know if it should have been on the Revolver album still to this day, but bang up job by Ringo, man. We always appreciate some Ringo tunes. I hope we get another one on the album. All right, we didn't have any Ringo tunes on Magical Mystery Tour. It was a little disappointing. All right, a, li a little disappointing, man. But <laughs> anyway, on to track two, right? The first new song of this album, we got Hold on, y'all. Only a northern song. All right, let's get to it, man. Talk to me, Beatles. Dang. If you're listening to this song, I'm not quite right. Uh, yeah, you're breaking the fourth wall right now, George. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. This song is chaotic. Jesus! What the fuck? Oh, Jesus Christ. Um... Oh, that's frustrating. Okay. All right, so that was track number two, um, Only a Northern Song, and that was another George um, effort, another effort by George right there. George is definitely still Georgian around. Um, I'm wondering what was going on in this era where George was trying to be like the British Aladdin. Right, because that's kind of what this is sound like, like, you know, Within You, Without You, Blue Jay Way, and now this song. I'm wondering, like, what happened in George's life that made him feel like he was Aladdin. And it's really frustrating because on all three of these songs, bro, I love the melody. Like on um, Blue Jay Way. Please don't be long. Please don't you be very long. Like that, like the melody, even within you, without you, what he's saying on the song, the message of that song. Even this one right here, like I, I think he talking crazy. Who is is he talking crazy to the label? Right, because at first, like he said, if you're listening to this song, you may think the chords are going wrong, but they're not. He just wrote it like that. When you're listening late at night, you might think the band are not quite white, but they are. They just play it like that. And this was probably some of the most meta I've heard the Beatles music ever. Like, I feel like George is talking straight to me. Right, but he's clearly trying to send some type of message with this, like this part right here. It doesn't really matter what chords I play, what words I say, or time of day. It's only a northern song. So he's either talking about like the type of song being a northern song, or is, this is a shot at the label. As my, nah, nah, I gotta figure this out. Hold on. George Harrison said the subject matter for only a northern song related to both his city of birth, Liverpool, and Mer Maryside, and the fact that the copyright for the composition belonged to the Beatles publishing company, Northern Songs. Okay, okay, okay. So yeah, yeah. What he was saying on here makes a lot more sense. Now I like, I do like the bite 
of this song, man, like George Harrison, like I, I love that. And I even love the melody on the chorus. George Harrison obviously has started to master these little Aladdin-like melodies. It's just the song as a whole. These just all oh, they just don't come together as a whole for me, man. Maybe I'm just I don't know, man. Maybe I need to do some more LSD. But that's not happening, y'all. So I'm just not going. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how I'm gonna get these songs, y'all. But yeah, all in all, like a decent song. Not a song I'd probably be running back to. Like I told you, I love the way George bends his vocals. I love the melody on the chorus. Like all the sounds, the weird noise and all that. That was all cool, but it's like, George, <laughs> you know, you still are you're like, like, what are you doing? Like, 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 like chill. I ain't gonna pile on George too much, man, because we know what he does on the next two efforts, man. White Album and Abbey Road. We know I hits his stride on those two albums, but hearing what he was doing on the three albums before those is kind of like, like, all right, George, man. <laughs> if you if you like it, I guess I. I don't love it, but I like it, I guess. Anyway, on to track number three. All right, hopefully we just, just get, let's, can we just get like a rock song? <laughs> Please, Beatles, like, am I asking for too much? <laughs> yeah, we're on to track number three, which I believe was All Together Now. Yep, track number three, All Together Now. Let's get to it. Polly. Yeah? Yeah, we need some energy in this motherfucker, Paul. Come on. All together now. All together now. Hey, get a little rhythm in there. There we go. Hold on, hold on. Slow down. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> that was music um, by the Beatles. <laughs> okay. All right, so that was track number three all together now. And I feel like I really got to watch this Yellow Submarine movie now because all three of these songs feel like very jolly, like kind of weird, kind of... I have to watch this movie now because I feel like, all like y'all said, when the Beatles make an album to coincide with a movie, it's not by coincidence. Normally, the sound of the album makes sense with the movie, right? If that, yeah. So now I feel like I have to watch the movie to this for this song to make any sense to me because without the context of that, just hearing this song on this album, I, there's nothing to say about this song. Like, like, there's, like there's absolutely nothing to say about that song. Like, they don't even have the lyrics for this song up. That should, that should tell you enough about this song. I will say it was very jolly, right? Definitely a mood lifter all together now, but I just, like, why? Like, why? Like, why? I understand, man. It was a lot of country. This had to be like an obligation. This had to be an obligation. We got three more songs left, only two new songs. So if they're not both bangers, oh Jesus. But I'm assuming this had to be some type of obligation, bro, because it's just weird how this was released after the White Album. Like after the psychedelic era was like clearly over for the Beatles and they just dropped this on people's head tops. Like it just don't make sense. But yeah, I'm definitely gonna watch the Magical Mystery Tour and the Yellow Submarine movies, but I did check on YouTube. Like before I watch any movies, I check on YouTube to see if anybody else has videos up. And I saw a reaction to the Hard Day's Night in the Help movie. I don't see any of the Yellow Submarine and Magical Mystery Tour, which shows me they're probably very heavily blocked on YouTube. So I will be reacting to those in the next couple weeks, but they're going to be Patreon exclusives, of course. But I'll, I'll announce it to y'all. I'll announce it to y'all. Yeah, that was track number three all together now. And I, I think they were all singing together. All the Beatles were together. So, I mean, that's... It's cool, cool, good song. I don't... I don't know, man. It's, it, it, it's tough to me that Yellow Submarine might be the best song so far. Right? Nah, nah it's not better than only a Northern song, but come on, man. Come on, man. Give me give me something. Give me a banger. Let's let's do it, Beatles. Let's do it. We on the track number four. All right, we got Hey Bulldog. Oh, please. Let's get to it, y'all. Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, I done heard this riff millions of times. Yeah. You can't talk to me, to me. Yep. Oh yeah, we back. Ooh. You can hear the Beatles like they like 
celebrating in the background, that's tough. Come on, keep it going, John, please. Wigwam. Come on, John. That riff is, this song has to be a classic, right? There's no way I haven't heard this song before. Don't bark at me, John. Don't bark at me, John. Hey, Buddha! That's all tough. That's a tough one right there. Okay, yes, sir, Mr. John Lennon. That is Hey Bulldog. A weird outro right there, but that kind of takes me back to the John Lennon from the first couple albums. Please, please me with the Beatles where he would do like the weird noises and talking in the outro. So I appreciate it, even though it was don't bark at me again, though, John. Like the last I think the last Beatle to bark at me was Ringo. Right? And I don't want either one of y'all barking at me. Don't do that. All right, that was track number four, Hey Bulldog. And from this outro, I'm wondering, George, you said there's nothing wrong with y'all from judging these songs, but are you sure wasn't nothing wrong with y'all, George, man? What the fuck? <laughs> but anyway, great song, amazing song right there from John. Um, I think definitely a needed pick me up a little bit more in the standard rock and roll vein, but still very psychedelic, still very Beatlesque. Um, 1967 Beatle. This, these, these songs had to be recorded during like the... Magical Mystery Tour Abbey Road sessions. I do not believe these were recorded in 1969, 1968. There's no way. There's no way. Right? Outside of just like the banging guitar riff and John's like, You can't talk to me. If you're lonely, you can talk to me. And then it just comes in with the dun, 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 dun. Like, yes, yes, yes. That's what I was looking for. I just needed a little bit of that Beatles. But all that to the side, I also like one thing that John does lyrically, like in his verses. I like these little passages right here, like this part. Some kind of happiness is measured out in miles. What makes you think you're something special when you smile? And then he does it again on this second verse. Some kind of innocence is measured out in years. You don't know what it's like to listen to your fears. The way that John does that lyrically, like even this part, when he came in talking about walking in the park wigwam, I don't know what a wigwam is. Like y'all probably know. That's probably like some British, UK, Liverpool slang term, location, something that I don't know about. But the way he just pulls me right back in lyrically with the some kind of solitude is measured out in you. You think you know me, but you haven't got a clue, right? Like it's just really just, I like how he does that. And man, I love kind of trying to like decipher what people mean by lyrics just like without looking into it. I'm kind of trying to figure out what he meant by this. Some kind of happiness is measured out in miles. So maybe what makes you think you're something special when you smile? So maybe the things that make you happy and make you smile aren't really that special because another person's happiness might be measured out even at a greater depth. They might need way more than you need to be happy and be able to smile. Right. I'm guessing John might be saying it about himself. Like he's saying, y'all think y'all so special when y'all happy, man. I can't find any happiness in myself. I think that's what he's getting at right there. And yeah, yeah. Some kind of innocence is measured out in years. You don't know what it's like to listen to your fears. Maybe he's kind of saying right here, like, um, listening to your fears and having to deal with your fears more as a child. Maybe, maybe ruins the sense of innocence. I don't really know what he's getting at right there. But like the way he starts off with a child, like no one understands. And then he jumps right into the jackknife. Like mentioning the, the child in one line, but then mentioning the jackknife in the very next line. I feel like that all just connects, man. I'm just deciphering. This is what I do in my, this is what I be doing, y'all. Like, I be doing this. I don't be trying to put these parts in the video, but this is, I, I, I have fun doing shit like this. I'm sorry. And then the last one, some kind of solitude is measured out in you. You think you know me, but you haven't got a clue. And maybe this is John saying to the fans, your view of solitude and loneliness is a lot different than mine. Like, you guys think you know me because you listen to my songs, but I'm the I'm just really lonely and I don't know I don't know man but but bang up job right there from John man great pick me up man we got one more new song to get to um let's pray it's a banger man I gotta come out here with at least two bangers at least two two out of four two out of four is solid Beatles but come on man come on man hit me one more we got track number five it's all too much oh yeah let's get to it man let's get to it All right. It's really, it's really fuzzy. This song is really fuzzy. Damn. Ringo, back up off the mic, Ringo. Them drum hits right in my ears. Uh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
Okay, George. There we go. Mm. It literally is too much. There's too much going on. <laughs> it's flying here, y'all. I, I tried to kill it. It's too quick. It's too much. Okay, George. Okay, George Jackson. Too much. Too much. Okay, George Jackson. The guitars on here, the drums, just the entire backdrop. Do y'all hear this? Too much. Too much. It's too much, man. Let's get to it. Okay, let me stop. Let me stop. That's crazy. But what isn't crazy or what was crazy was that last song, man. George Harrison still clearly trying to be like the um, British Aladdin in very many ways. But I love what they did with that one right there. I do. All right, so that was track number five. It's all too much, man. A great song right there from George. Probably um, tie, Probably my favorite from this little George is like mystical uh, all seeing eye era that he was in man this was definitely my favorite between this and blue jay way for sure All right i just felt like a lot of the other george efforts were lacking like that punch like 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 that energy like 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 come on man this is rock man i understand you trying to like uh, shout out to jorma whoever jorma is and showing love to jorma but come on man this is rock and roll man i need to hear them george harrison guitars banging like sounding fierce ferocious and that's what i got on this song we got ringo on the drums man banging out all right, we got another, another beautiful melody on the chorus. That's one thing I will give George is he be, he doesn't, he hasn't been missing on these melodies. All right, these melodies, George, know how to write a nice little chorus, man. It, that's, that's something he's had since really, what, maybe like a hard day's night? It's all too much for me to take. Like, it's just really wavy, really hazy. Like, George was, it was just really laid back in the studio on these albums, and it's cool. Right, normally I like a little bit more oomph. Out of my artists at times, but this this was good right here from George. And I feel like this song like is kind of addressing George's like you can hear the disillusionment in George at this current point in the era of Beatles. And as much as I have been kind of shitting on these uh, George uh, Aladdin songs as I call them, I will say I, I I can see I can see why he got to this bag. I can see what reverted him to this mode because this was the point where the Beatles were starting to become less of a touring band and more of a studio band. So I had to imagine it was probably really frustrating and daring and probably heartbreaking at times for George to be in these sessions, probably bringing a lot of ideas to the sessions, a lot of like, you know, cool things and kind of being shut down. Like I George. I've listened to every Beatles album now pretty much except for like um, Let It Be and Past Masters Volume 2. George only has like two songs on all these albums, right? It's never more than two on any single one of these albums. And I can see why that can be frustrating, especially when you're starting to, you know, you know, make that turn as an artist, right? By the time he made that turn, the hierarchy of the band was already pretty established. Like it was Paul and John's band at this point, right? And George kind of had to get in where he fit in. So I could see how that might make him kind of revert to a more spiritual tone and use every song as like a chance to send a message. Right, since 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 I can't like get more than two songs in every album, I'll make sure the two songs that I put on there really reflect how I'm feeling and what I'm going through and what I love. Right, that's probably where Within, Within You Without You came from, where Blue Jay Way came from, and I do have to respect and acknowledge that part. And that's probably where a lot of these, you know, hazy, Aladdin, like spiritual like otherworldly sounds come from from George, man. It's kind of cool. That's kind of cool, and it's kind of cool when you really look at it like that. That's cool. But yeah, man, that's it for all the new joints on here. I guess I'll listen to uh, track number six, All You Need Is Love, Take Us Home, Vibe Out. It's a good song. All right, very good song, man. I heard it was, this song was a part of the first live television broadcast. Like, bro, the Beatles, the Beatles can't just do everything first, bro. Like, 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 they, they, like they just get the first live television broadcast, <laughs> the Beatles performed and recorded a song live. That's nuts, man. That's nuts. <laughs> but, man, I'm getting used to it, man. It's the Beatles, man. It is what it is. All right, we're moving on. Track number six. All you need is love. Let's get to it, man. All rise for your honorable Ringo and the boys. <laughs> Nothing you can do that can't be done. No one you can say that can't be saved. Man, what? 
Really listen to what John is saying on here. All you need is love. All you need is love. Oh, and the way the way the harmonies rise and the chords just suddenly come in. <laughs> If it's not for you, it will not come to you. That's what John is saying in layman's terms. Okay. I, I do like how they're all together now. I ain't even peeped that. I like that. I like how they tied those two songs together. This is the best part of the song right here, y'all. This breakdown. So satisfying. What do you need besides love, y'all? That's all you need. That's all you need, man. <laughs> all right, man. Beautiful. I kind of like this as an outro better on Yellow Submarine and Magical Mystery Tour. Is that weird? Like, it fit It fit this project much better, man. Amazing outro. John, the message he was sending, man. If it's not for you, it won't come to you, man. Love is all you need, and you don't got to go searching for love. You don't. Love is not something you need to go searching for, man. I, I love this song, man. I, I didn't give it the credit it deserved on Magical Mystery Tour. I said it was good, but I didn't just dive into how good this song is. And to know how much it really meant to the culture, being the first live broadcast, right, to support, like, Charity War, like, the Vietnam War that was going on, like, yeah. Bang, bang up by John and the boys on that one, man. Bang up job. But yeah, man, that was Yellow Submarine. And I will say, man, the first three songs, man, y'all can kind of keep that. Beatles, right? I'm just going to say it right now. I'm not going to make this a long post-album review. It's not much that needs to be said. Yellow Submarine, a Northern Song, all together now. I don't need to hear those songs ever again in my life. I might try a Northern Song again because all, it's all too much in Northern Song. I feel like there were similar qualities, but there was something missing in Northern Song, and I need to know what was missing because because they're, they're, they're definitely in the same vein, but it's all too much just had more to me, man. I don't know. But yeah, my favorites off this album, clearly, Hey Bulldog, it's all too much. All you need is love. Point blank period. Wash my hands of that, right? It's a little bittersweet now, y'all, because we're heading on, right? We already heard the White Album, right? We already heard Abbey Road. It's time to move on to the final Beatles album, y'all. We got Let It Be coming up next on the channel. Right now, there's a lot of discussions about, like, the different versions of the album. Apparently, there's, like, one version that was produced by... Not the Beatles and George Martin, which is like the original version that we all have. And then there's the version that was released in the 2000s by Paul McCartney. That's like Beatles and George Martin, like inf more, more influenced by the Beatles sound, right? So what I'm going to do with that is I'm definitely going to react to the original version first. Like I need to hear like the version that everybody in the world heard in the 60s. Like it would make no sense not to listen to that version first. But I am going to check out the naked version too. And if I feel like the video is like interesting enough, like there's enough differences, like enough perspective for me to put it on YouTube, I will. But it's definitely going on Patreon. I'm definitely going to check out the net both versions. The naked version is going to be on Patreon. And if it's a good video, it's going to be on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And then after that, we have Past Masters Volume 2. I see a lot of y'all saying, where's Volume 2, man? We heard Volume 1. Where's Volume 2, man? We're going to get to Volume 2 right after Let It Be. And then after Volume 2, solo album time, man. Solo album, George, John, Paul, Ringo. We got to hear the solo whoops, too. So it's going to be a lot more Beatles content, a lot more Beatles love on this channel, man. And I do just want to kind of talk about the plan for the channel real quick. Like, I don't know if y'all saw the little community post I did where I was asking what bands you want me to listen to. Right? It was kind of just a litmus test to see, like, what bands outside of the ones that I already know, like the major ones, the Pink Floyds, the, the uh, Led Zeppelins, the Beatles, the Radioheads, the Nirvanas, like, all the big bands. I wanted to see how many more there were. And, man, I got a lot of suggestions in there. I wrote every single suggestion down. It's all on the list in my notes. Right? And we're going to get to everything at some point, but... I just want y'all to know, and if y'all haven't noticed yet, man, everything on my channel, everything I do, I move with some type of intent. I don't just listen to stuff just to listen to it just because a lot of people want me to listen to it, right? It all got to kind of make sense. It all has to kind of be connected in a way, sort of, but not all the way. So for people asking for like Radiohead and Nirvana and like later 90s and 2000s bands, y'all not going to have to wait months to get them reactions. But I'm definitely going to get to those very soon because I'm just clearing out the top of every era. And there's not that many giants in like the 70s and the 80s and the 90s, right? Most of the giants were in the 60s. That's why the 60s are taking <laughs> such a time to get to. But we definitely gonna get to those very, very, very soon, y'all. Before we get to that, we're definitely going to um, finish off Led Zeppelin, The Beatles, The Beach Boys, Pink Floyd. Within the next week, y'all, I'm going to be adding, y'all going to be getting a Jimi Hendrix reaction. 
right? Y'all gonna be getting a Rolling Stones reaction and a Black Sabbath reaction, right? I think those three bands are a good way to transition maybe out of the 60s primarily. Like, we're still gonna be listening to 60 albums, right? I'm still, I'm gonna be going back and forth all over the place, but it's all gonna make sense, right? It's, it, just follow my lead, y'all. Just follow my lead, man. I, I'm gonna stop babbling, but hopefully y'all get what I'm kind of saying. And I'll give an example real quick. Let's just say you go to a restaurant, right? You go to a restaurant. It's your first time trying this restaurant. Really hyped up. Everybody loves this place. You go in there. You sit down. You eat, and the food is terrible. What you order is terrible. Let's say you like steak. You got a steak, and the shit was just garbage, right? You're probably not gonna want to visit that restaurant ever again in your life, right? The first impressions are the best impressions. But let's say you go to that restaurant for the first time and your first meal is amazing, right? It's immaculate, perfect steak, perfect potatoes, see, surf and turf, just amazing, all that. You go back a second time to a restaurant to get an entirely different meal, and that different meal was just as good as the meal that you normally get. So you're like, okay, this place is really good. Everything they make is pretty solid. If you were to go back a third time and get a third dish and you didn't like that dish as much as the first two, it wouldn't really matter as much because you've already had two amazing dishes. So you're still going to be inclined to try more from the restaurant because you know they can do better. Right. So that's kind of why I do it, how I do where I start with the major where I'm starting with the major bands and with the major bands, I'm starting with their major albums and then kind of doubling back because I want to hear these people at their best because it just gets me more interested in hearing the evolution when I know what they evolve into. I know it's kind of backwards, but that's how this channel works, man. That's how it's going to go. We're not going to start like there are some bands where you just have to start from the debut album like Led Zeppelin. Um, I think Jimi Hendrix, you got to start from the debut. There are bands like that where you just got to start from day one and move forward. But people like Pink Floyd and the Beach Boys and the, and the Beatles, like really just the 60s bands who have like really iffy early discographies, you know. But yeah, man, yeah, it's, it's a lot, y'all. I'm really excited for the channel. Like, I'm just ready. I, I just want to see how my channel looks in a couple months because I have a vision and I, I, I'm anxious to see my vision play out. That's all. That's all. But yeah, once again, the full version of this reaction is on Patreon. Y'all go check out my second channel. Subscribe to my second channel. We dive into band lore, interviews, documentaries, docu-series, just anything behind the music, man. Even the making of the music, tension in the bands, all that. It's a great channel. Link in the description. Check it out, man. But with that being said, I'm going to y'all a dude. It's your boy Life of Darius, a.k.a. Dre Jarma, and I am out. Jesus Sanders, man.